And we can start off and introduce our players once again. To the bottom right hand side, our blue Terran is going to be Bion. And he's going up against the red Zerg to the top left hand side of the map. He is Solar. Solar representing Splice. One of the newest teams to join the world of StarCraft 2. Bjorn representing Team Expert, of course, the team he comes with when he won BlizzCon is. To kick us off into game number one, we're going to be seeing a free Rax Reaper opening. So Bjorn opening aggressively here in the first game, looking to apply pressure, looking to take a lead early, and looking to roll with this from this point. So, first Reaper does start on up already, and... Well, second and third racks will finish soon enough, and we'll see how this is going to go. I mean, Bjorn always was one to love the free racks Reaper play, and I mean, when you've got micro like Bjorn's, you can understand why. Even on a map like Echo, where there isn't too many kind of ledges to utilize, you know, to really kind of a greatest, you know, it's not a frozen temple, it's not an orbital shipyard, but it is probably one of the maps out of this map pool which you're more likely to see Reapers on. So, you know, free racks Reaper here, and we're just going to be seeing the first of these Reapers, Pops out and starts going up towards the upper left hand side. So, we were going to go across the map to get uh, ready to scout. And, well, Solar, Hatch Gas pull from him. His Zergon speed starts. His first Zergon's on the way. He's going to find out that it's three racks Reaper in about one second. I mean, already seeing this racks on the low ground is a good indicator. Obviously, seeing a no command Drop center. Everything. Second Your racks. units are getting killed. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. A <laughs> second Rax is obviously going to help him. Help him to figure that out. <laughs> Didn't expect to hear Total Biscuit when I was in the vision of Bion there momentarily. <laughs> Isn't that cool? He's actually using the Total Biscuit announcer. Confirmed. Bion is a uh, TB fan. How, how sick is that? You can see a grenade going down there and just going to see uh, yeah, Zergon getting picked off. And another grenade going down. These Reapers continuing to apply pressure in these early stages. Now starting to pull back just a little bit. He has a few more of the Reapers continuing to come out and. I mean, this is where things become annoying. Bjorn getting a few more Reapers, lots of grenades to use. Gonna start hitting mineral lines and just keeps on trading. Nice grenade once again. And now he's picking off a lot of these Zerglings. We see one more grenade to the mineral line. And now he will back away. Queen damage is pretty good, but it's not enough to take down a Reaper still. And these units will just collect on the low ground. Another Reaper low from the hit in the natural expansion or so. And Bjorn just gonna wait for a little bit more health to come onto these Reapers, pulling the damage ones back. And trying to pressure the front once again. Again, Queen's getting a little bit low, but we're getting to this point where Solar has held on long enough to have transfusers very shortly. So these first two Queens that are kind of damaged will get healed up, although he actually puts down a Creep Tumor with the lower health one. So, Creep Tumor on the way. I mean, Creep Tumor is nice as well. The Creep you have here can help you to kind of push these Reapers back a lot. And yeah, I mean, it just gives you a little bit of extra speed. And you can see that Solar, obviously, as well here. Uh, worth mentioning is that he is going for a Zergling based defense, he isn't going for the Roaches at all. Which means that he has to make sure his micro is on point. You do not want to be playing a Zerglin based defense if you're not confident that you're going to be able to make the right decisions when it comes to dodging away from the grenades. Because if you run into all of the grenades, you're going to see a lot of your Zerglins flying all over the place. When they land back on the ground, they're probably not going to be alive. So you do have to be very careful with it. It's a very fragile way to play against the Free Rax Reaper, but it is the better way because it's less of a commitment. It lets you transition much more easily than the Roach Ravager does, which takes up a lot of gas early game. and. I mean, you can play Ling Bane off of it, but then you've got some Road Ravager mixed in, and it's just an investment that doesn't really make sense in the long run, as, well, Bion is going to come back into this third base, and I think that's going to be a dead third base, because I just don't see Solar being able to turn this around soon enough. A lot of Ling's down to the south side of the map, and uh, third is going to get very low. It's going to be very close, I guess. And we're going to see some Zergons starting to go down as well. Another nice grenade, and another one again. And the Zergons continue to take quite a lot of damage. Queen's starting to close the gap, though. And now the Reapers will have to leave. So the third base does not fall, but he does uh, take a lot of damage on his Zergling counters. Oh, Reapers going to come back up. I mean, the threat of losing the third base isn't gone just yet. Is now, though, Reapers have to be careful. I guess they've got a ledge they can jump up to into the main base with over here. And they're not going to do that just yet. Just still sticking behind the third base. Middle the line, another grenade coming down. That one's a bit too far away, though. This grenade's a little bit better as you'll stick around to fight. And then another grenade to push the greens back. Nice target firing by Solo. Takes down both lower health Reapers. And Bjorn only has five left over, but I mean he's already done the damage he needs to get done. Work account is actually in a lead for Bjorn as he sets up into his extra engineering base now. He's got his factory down, starport build and reactor next to it. Third CC is up. I mean everything is here for Bjorn for his mid game, right? And he goes into the mid game with a worker advantage. So this free reactor has done more than enough. The pressure's been good. He's kept solo on a fairly low drone count. 
and that's the goal to come out you know it's it's a pressure build and it's designed to bring you into a lead due to the pressure that you create and that's exactly what he's doing this pressure's not over just yet these reapers are still a little bit of a threat right now and again still has to keep worrying about them and yeah i mean there's not as many they're not as scary as they used to be and they will now go down he takes down a few more zerglings as he goes and so starts up eight now ten drones making sure he's going to be able to pump out as much as possible as he too is going to go for his own upgrades the double evil chamber in place one one starting and the same across the map so upgrades are going to be dead even here going into the first set of them uh first set over the next couple of moments so few more just join up down on the low ground we see a couple of these overlords some saw just sat in the center and the third cc is now landed in position as well i mean beyond let's say maybe the one disadvantage of losing the reapers is that you know your third base is maybe a bit more vulnerable but here on echo that's not really much of an issue especially as soon as this a marine count like this that can kind of move out and take down these rocks your third base is pretty safe nonetheless so there's those two medivacs going to boost up and he'll just load up 16 of the marines and this is going to be his initial kind of creep hit squad where he's going to be moving around the map and looking to pick up those creep puma kills just slowing down the Zerg's map control, slowing down the vision available to Solar and the mobility of Solar for as long as possible, or as much of it as possible. So here you go, boosting around. We'll just unload towards where the fourth base is expected to be over the next couple of minutes. And then again, from here you can stim on in. There's one creep tumor already going to go down and scan. He'll get a second one. He'll actually find an active tumor up here. He'll kill an overlord and a couple more creep tumors while he's at it. So again, there's a little bit of damage and actually still losing another overlord. Was already supply blocked after losing the first, gets even further supply blocked. Four overlords on the way in production to try and make up for that as his left finishes up in the main. Now allowing him to go into the spire play and obviously a really nice addition to the Lingbane playstyle. Lingbane Muta has been the playstyle of the uh oh kind of the recent times basically. Lingbane Muta has been the way to play in the past uh, month or so. It is really once again. It, it always comes back to Ling Bay Meter and TVZ. Like, when doesn't it? It always comes back to Ling Bay Meter. We see a few more creep tumors getting cleaned out. As we see Marines coming forwards, and, well, Bane's starting to run forwards. Actually, the first Bane connections are pretty nice, but is there enough of a follow up? No Bane speed just yet from Solar, and, I mean, this is the thing. We look at the damage that Bjorn did earlier, and it looks as though it was more than enough. Targets down those Banes, he looks to get a team more as well. I mean, what do you do if your Banes are slow and you're going up against Bjorn? Well, you just expect them to die before they connect into those marines and now Bjorn just keeps pushing forwards it's really actually a bit put far enough ahead and he's going to be taking game one with the follow up GG for Solar Bjorn takes game number one in this series would that change TVZ for Bjorn it might actually make it a bit of a fairer matchup sometimes in seriousness no though I mean he just got ahead early with the um, early reapers he did enough he killed enough he forced enough units and from there, his follow-up was very powerful, and you could see that Solar's Bane speed just wasn't there in time for that many Marines. His, you know, his, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was basically just the Bane speed, right? I mean, you can argue the rest of it all you want, you know, maybe you could have more units, but does it matter if the Banes go down before they reach the army? Well, no, probably not. So, Bjorn takes the first game, and he does spawn now to the bottom left-hand side of Overgrove. The blue Terran player here from Team Expert, it's Bjorn. And to the other right-hand side... From Splice. I'm gonna change things up a little bit here by taking his hatchery first at the third base. See what that's all about in just a moment. It is Solar to the top right. Very well may just be one of those situations where he says, Well, I'm gonna go up to three bases quickly anyway, so if he scouts me early and he's got you know he's not gonna see my hatchery, maybe he's gonna overreact. Or it could be a free hatch before pool. Wow. Well, that's something I didn't. I honestly didn't come into my mind at all until I see, saw this drone move into the low ground. Because how often do you see a free hatch before pool and TVZ? Barely ever, really, because it's just so risky against the Reaper opening. I mean, you just don't have links for a little longer, Queen for a little longer. It just gives the Reaper way more time to get damage done. So, interesting choice by Solar here. Double hatch, gas pool, very late pool as well. 139, it goes down. I mean, the first Reaper's already coming up to being about halfway built, so this is going to be kind of crazy for the next couple of moments. And as we see, the uh, factory going to build up now as well, and as we see the command center building up on the natural expansion, so beyond setting up into this, as you see this one overlord from Solar coming through the center of the map, and I mean, as he gets over here, you'll see the Reaper-based expansion. What is interesting is his factory follow-up, and, you know, Beyond doesn't really kind of strike me as the guy who goes factory follow-up very, you know, all that often at all, because he is a player who 
is very good with the Marines and you know the 2 one, one build order that was kind of made famous a bit by Bjorn and how well he could control it and how well he utilized it and just the decisions he made with the build as to when to attack and when not to. So uh, yeah, kind of kind of uh, interesting to see him go for a factory based follow up. It does make me intrigued to kind of see how exactly he wants to, you know, what build he's going to execute here because it's obviously going to be Hellion based initially but you know, where does he go afterwards? Is he really going to apply a lot of pressure? Is it going to be a Hellbat based attack? Some different possibilities as we set on up multiple queens now on the way from Solar. I guess one thing that there's also kind of, uh, you know, one way you can actually say kind of safe. So actually, this is a cute little thing that I didn't really think of just before. And we didn't really see it in this game. But I guess if the Reaper scouts on this side of the map and he doesn't see the hatchery finished, he might assume pool first, not the free hatch. And if he assumes pool first, he's going to pull the Reaper back like he did anyway as he was playing safe. And so you're more likely to kind of keep the Reaper at home rather than harass anyways because then pool first openings are so destructive to your command center trying to build. And as Bjorn is going to go and uh, start up a couple of more Hellions. Medivac on the way too is just looking towards either a Hellbat based attack or again most likely I think just a Hellion drop because he doesn't actually have well an armory started already and it's getting kind of late if he doesn't have an armory just yet so. Rodron drops down from Sulla as he guess he did see the first couple of Hellions and Wants to start making sure he's going to be safe against this. There's that medevac which flies across here. And, well, there is an armory. So, I mean, there's going to be an armory follow-up. But, again, the, the Hellbats won't be able to morph in for quite a while yet. So, it's not exactly going to line up with this initial sort of uh, setup here. And we're going to be seeing this uh, Rebellions. There we go. Deload up now. You go in towards the main base. They're going to boost on over. I'm just going to start... Uh, Turn loads, a few aliens unloading the main, but look at this, Solar, very well prepared, Zergon's in position, and well, you're just going to try and keep on moving forwards anyways, as, I mean, either way, I mean, if you can trade out with the Zergon's, it's still nice damage, nice little control there, keeping that one low health alien alive, Solar pulls away his drones in plenty of time, and that is going to be the lift now on those four Hellions to pull away down the right-hand side of the map, a few more Hellions positioned to the left from Bjorn, and again, Armory is now in-game, so he's able to utilize that if you would like to, and we also have that Liberator, which is on the way up as well right here, so... Everyone else coming up as... Now we see this Hellbat drop coming in towards the main. I mean, the drop does Hellions and morphed into Hellbat, but Roach is here. And it's going to be a pretty simple cleanup. These, Ro these Hellbats don't do too much. Doesn't even pick off that one Queen, which stays alive. Very low on health, but stays alive, and that's the important part. However, it does act as a good distraction. Queen's out of position now, allowing this Liberator Siege up freely on the third to nine. A lot of mining right away, and now Willen Siege picks off a couple of the eggs that are morphing in. We'll just back away, full of health still to keep on harassing as the game continues. Double engineering base, so I mean for a moment or two I was starting to think well maybe Bjorn's going to keep on committing to mech based units and he's going to play mech which is very weird for Bjorn but it is going to be bio, it's just taking a while to get set up in towards the bio kind of based units. Stimpak does start from Bjorn and you'll see the two engineering base coming down from him as well so. Seeing all the indicators of bio is solo with a few units here could maybe look to push forwards but Again, I mean, these units were initially to kind of designed to kind of get rid of the Hellbats, and now they're going to be able to kind of, you know, they could pressure, but the reality is there's a Liberator here. There's not much you can do. There's a tank in the back as well, and Bjorn's very safe. He's making sure he's very safe, keeping the Liberators at home, putting his bunker up as well. He's making sure he's not going to be in any trouble. Leaves the Reaper on the Watchtower, keeps that information. So you're going to see some Roaches and Ravages moving forwards once again. Sola is looking to clean out that Watchtower again, wants to maybe keep Bjorn guessing, keep Bjorn in the dark. The less Bjorn sees, the more he's likely to overreact and to overdefend. I mean, you know, if he sees that there's no attack coming, he might salvage the bunker. You know, it's little things like that that all do add up. So, if Solar can deny that sort of vision, he may as well. You can see the Hellions moving up the right, and uh, are they, are they going to dive? They're going to go on to creep, and with Ling's Roaches and all the rest up, I mean, it's not going to be an easy way out. And Bjorn, well, he sees he's not going to get out down to the south side. Queens are here from the north side. You know, four of those Hellions go down almost instantly. The fifth and sixth will go down as well. Goodbye, Hellions. It was nice knowing you. Didn't really do much at all, so... Not the best of opens from Bjorn here. I mean, he loses 10 Hellions to kill. Let's just look at the units lost. He kills, what, he loses 10 Hellions to Medivac for 32 Zerglings and Overlord. Mm, I think 32 Lings is good. But for the most part, Sol has just been droning heavily after this because he knows with that many Hellions made early on, well, the barracks can't build that quickly if he's investing that much minerals into Hellions, and that means he can really just kind of pump up the drone count because there's not going to be an attack coming soon. 
that's going to threaten him. So he's able to get straight up to 70 workers, no threat at all. Starts all of his upgrades, 1-1, one, one, Bane and Speed, even Roach Speed, because he has a few Roach Ravager up. And he's also got the Spire building as well. So Solo really going into everything here. His Beyond sets up into his own third base as well, drops down his first mule in this base as also. Still has a few tanks, I mean, making a few more tanks than you might expect in the TVZ. And this is going to be a kind of response to, I guess, seeing a few of the Roaches and Ravagers early on. But as it switches into Lean Bay mid, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bjorn switch his own composition up if we get to that sort of stage of the game and seeing him start to move towards most likely kind of a Widowmine based composition instead. Viking. He's just looking for overload kills and does pull back now as Queen's getting some good damage done. No need to test Carapace, so overloads are kind of slow to move, and if he comes up the right hand side with this overload, with this Viking, sorry, well, he's probably going to have a pretty good time. So starting to move over in that direction now as. A couple of Zerglings already getting taken down here towards the center. You can see these SCVs continue to mine away on the third base as well. And there's that Liberator around the right. And Viking up to the right hand side as well. As he moves forward, so he'll uh, take down a Zergling on the Watchtower. And a few more Lings going down. And again, a little bit of pressure here from Fiona as his first two Medivacs come out. But there's just so much from Solar. And of course, there's going to be so much from Solar. I mean, he's been really kind of unpressured for the majority of this game. I mean, the pressure he's had has been very ineffective as Viking finds one more overlord before getting taken down by Mutalists. And Bjorn will just have to back away. And we wait, continue to set up here on Overgrowth. Again, Ling Bay Mutal going up against this Marine tank based composition for now. Bjorn with a lot more reinforcements coming in. His combat shield's about to finish too. And so we'll just forget his plus two melee for a little while here. It was a little bit slower on the plus one as well than the Carapace, which is Probably why you start Carapace already and hasn't gone back to start melee just yet. There it is. Start up now. So a little bit of an upgrade lead will come in from Bjorn in about a minute or so. But it's just going to be very slight. Wouldn't be too significant on the game, I don't think. Because, well, the Lings do move on forwards here. And well, Marines are stimming. And these Lings on their own. It's not the fight they want to be taking. Not at all. So that wasn't uh, pretty for them as tanks will on siege and continue to move up this left-hand side. A couple more Poop Tumors getting taken down as... Bjorn pushes on forwards, looking to see what he can do. And again, the less creep on the map for Solo, the better this is going to be for the Terran player. He's going to pull around the left-hand side himself now. A few more tanks sieging up here. Ling, Bane, Ravager, all collecting. And ready to defend this. I just wonder what Bjorn can do with the positions here, you know, if he can really kind of just keep the tanks in a location where they're going to be almost untouchable and able to just keep pushing those forwards to really kind of bully Solar back into locations and to keep him away from engaging. Few Queens though just, just to the right of this army, just slightly just engaging as well. And again, it's a very slow push up the left from Bjorn. Still have a few tanks and siege in the back as Solar setting up a much larger flank now. Lots of units still left at the top, but a lot of units starting to wrap around the right side and obviously potential for a run by, but more likely I think to be an engagement in towards this Terran army. Clean this up, push it away from his base. Here we go. Bane's running forwards. He'll pull back as he waits for the rest of his units to come on in. But the tanks are sieged. Solo decides to disengage for the most part. 38 more lings will rebuild. And he looks to engage into this again here shortly. Still a little beyond. I mean, keeping good control of the map. Staying on this map. Staying in the center. Clean that more creep. Look at the reinforcement numbers that are coming across here. As Bale, yeah, both players are maxing out. So it's not really much of a surprise. It's kind of a weird stage of the game for Bjorn though, because I mean it's a nice time to be pushing us actually hold my forts because there we go, Lings and Banes run on through and well, reinforcements are a little bit late to the party, the tank's getting blown up very early as Bjorn will want to start pulling those marines back and maybe leaving them roars to tank, but he's actually going to start pulling everything back, just kiting and certain stepping, more reinforcements coming in, he's not splitting his Bjorn, as we're going to be seeing these Widow Mines coming into play, but it doesn't matter if they're all clumped up and the Banes connect before they can go off. That's going to be goodbye to a lot of this army. Is going to be seeing a Ravager picked off as well. And these units are just going to gather back up to the right hand side once again. Zerglings, Banelings, all setting on up. More meters on the way. And well, I don't think the counter attack of Bjorn is going to be too threatening. Not after he lost so much there in that last engagement. Bjorn is really in a little bit of trouble here on Overgrove. And it looks as though Solo might have taken the fight which he needs. I was going to say it was an interesting time for Bjorn to continue being aggressive because it's the time where. You know, he's setting up into his final set of upgrades. It's a time where you usually see Terran players just dropping and maybe not being quite as aggressive as he was here. And in, this, uh, in that situation, as we see Marines and Marauders still collecting up on the left-hand tower. Lings, Banes, a couple of Ravagers spreading themselves out as well into a massive concave. Soul is getting ready to engage in once again. I try to zoom out and show you guys all of these units, but they're just so well spread. 
Mews are going to loop around the left hand side. Zo, Bjorn actually attacks into this. Gold give. Here we go. Ignore the Mutalists because this is where the main fight is happening. West Widow Mine doesn't really go off on much at all. And again, Bjorn just st stepping backwards. Will it be enough this time around? The Mutalists will turn around. Honestly, not that many Marines left over here. Will it be enough to get rid of the Mutalists? Well, I don't really think so. But we'll just keep on going down. More Banes from the north. And that's going to be GG. Solar picks up game two. And we're tied on up. One player is already starting to be just a little bit aggressive. He is the blue town to the bottom left-hand side. It's Bjorn. Free actually burn once again. Top right, go and pull first. It's Sola. Maybe catching on to the potential aggression of his opponent here. And, well, if we can set on up, let's see what he's going to do. Thank you very much again. Uh, just shouted out before we jumped into a break quickly. I know these guys like to host games very quick, so good to uh, jump into the break ace have to make sure that we uh, don't miss too much of the actual game. Thank you very much, Fulden Ace, as you did hit the sub button during the last game. Can I get some STI hearts in the chat, please? For Fulden Ace, thank you very much for subscribing, dude. Hope you're having a great weekend, and welcome to the subs. Thank you for the support, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much as we now focus onto this game. Ah, if I go and pull first uh, against this, suddenly Solo is going, uh, he didn't see out the Overlord, that's why. God damn it. Doesn't know it's free actually, but so now he does, as he sees the multiple racks with the Lings. explosions, you hear? That's your base being flattened. <laughs> oh man, these are uh, total biscuit announcers. They're catching me off guard every single time. Um, but Sola immediately cancels the third base, and as he cancels the third base, he's able to set up into a little bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a better position in terms of defending against this. So we're going to be seeing a few more Zerglings on the way out, and I guess it's just going to be a Zergland based defense again. Now, Daybreak, I would not say is as good of a map when it comes to defending against this, when it comes to kind of executing, sorry, this free rack Reaper. There's a lot fewer ledges, they're much further away. Much better chance for the Lynx to split on up and to grab a surround on those Reapers. So, it feels like this is going to be much better for Solar to defend on than it was on Echo. As we do see the natural expansion starting to build from Beyond Sea starts to set that up as when it's continuing to come down here. A little bit more down from that Queen getting very low. And it's Bjorn, of course, and he is, of course, always looking to kind of make the most of these units to attack from a very early stage. Next chance here is available, puts that queen back up to full health, more or less. And again, that's important, you know, kind of holding off these reapers for a while to get that first transfuse up. It does make a difference. As you can see an immediate kind of reaper up here. Nice grenade. Lings are still slow. No link speed just yet. I mean, Solo delayed that a little bit because he went for that faster third hatchery initially before cancelling it when seeing what this actually was. There's another queen or two coming out though. Now here is the link speed and Solar. If you can avoid the grenades, we'll be able to kind of again start forcing some surrounds and start making something happen from that point. There's a few more links continue to come out here and obviously oh, see that command center. is about to finish up on the natural and third base coming down again. Beyond going for pretty much the exact same as what we saw in game number one of this series. The 3CC follow up. He'll go into his reactor shortly and get ready to start building stim up as well. And there it is, the two reactors coming up on the front. Tech Lab will come down on the main base barracks so you can have that little bit of a safer sim pack. Oh, another Reaper actually. Is that really what he wants to do? No, I don't think so. I think Tech Lab and Stim is definitely more so kind of his uh, on his agenda right now. Is well, Reaper's doing some good damage on the third hatchery and he will force the cancel. And so not going to come in. He's got some links to the left side as well and looks to maybe try and get that surround we're talking about here. As well, here we go. This becomes the dodging aspect of this as grenades will go down on the center of the Reapers. It's Bjorn's only choice to push these Zerglings away because he was fully surrounded there. And he jumps back down the low ground, but you can see that Solo is cleaning this up. And yeah, from this point, this is actually very different to the last game because at this point, Solo comes out actually a couple workers ahead instead of a couple workers behind. And he killed off all of the Reapers with a lot of Lings left over. And look at this from Bjorn. He makes more Reapers. Very, very interesting to start going into a lot more Reaper production again. How interesting is that? So, obviously not content with having lost his Reapers, does not kind of agree that that is how he wants this to go. So, starts to build a lot more of them and, ooh, I mean, I mean, interesting, right? No stim pack yet, he's delaying it for the Reaper production. And, uh, yeah, what, a, what an interesting way to follow up, I guess, as we see these Reapers just gathering on together. Now he's making some Marines. I guess he'll start up Stimpak as well. Interesting stuff here by Spion. An interesting decision based on, I guess, losing the Reapers at that point. Still no Stim though, so I mean, again, his follow-up is not going to be anywhere near his point. Maybe is he just forgetting Stim? Because it means he's building the reactor on the factory. He's got the starport on the way up as well, but... 
he hasn't started stim. And if he hasn't started stim, he can't really harass as well as he would like to. Starts it now. I'm trying to think about the Reapers. I was going to say, like, maybe they're a way to help them defend against aggression, but at the same time, it takes much longer to build five Reapers than it takes to build five Marines. And so you could have had ten Marines or five Reapers. What's better? Well, maybe the Reapers with the grenades and the kite ability. It's really, it's a really interesting decision here. Very uh, interesting indeed, as we're going to be seeing the uh, couple of cube teams getting picked up. So a few of those getting cleaned out towards the front here. As we do see these Zerglings just gathering up from Solar towards the third base. This, uh, whatever that was, just cancelled. I'm not sure actually what he was building in that position, but, uh, he and Reapers in this one hell here. What a combo. Just, uh, moving around here to see what they can get up to at this point. So, let's just continue to move around a little bit. We'll see them. Now the units coming back up towards the high ground now, and a lot more links coming out once again from Solar towards the center. Reaper will be, uh, forced to kind of pull back, though, now, and one night of that production start. And again, just. Much later stand than I thought this would be, so Bjorn can't really be as aggressive on the map as he would like to, but I guess he'll get, you know, fill up his medivacs, get across, I mean, he's still with the Reapers doing a good job, keeping the kind of creep spread push back. So I guess despite delaying the stim, he has the Reapers there to do a similar sort of job for a little while. It just feels like a much more flimsy way of going about it. Anyways, I'm going to start stop criticizing it's Bjorn, I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing, more so than I know what he's doing, so... We'll uh, truly wait and see what uh, what's going to go next. I mean, it is just heading in towards a Ling Bane. Probably Muta game. There's a Spy actually just dropping down as we speak. So, looking to be a Ling Bane Muta game. Heading up against just the very standard MMMM. The Quad M's. Marine Marauder Medivac Mine. This is the first wooden mines to start up in production as well. 1-1 one, one upgrades will be slightly solar favoured. But 2-2 two, two will not be far behind from either player. And it shouldn't really make too much of a difference here. It's going to be pretty even between the two of them as we do see a few Reapers up to the top side moving around themselves seeing where they can go. We're going to loop around this direction and most of the Marines moving forward and towards the center and Queens are here to kind of try and push one of those Medivacs back a little bit. So one Medivac taking a bit of damage and again he's got Stim now he's got 1-1 one, one about a finish. He's actually going to keep on kind of pulling in and out and doesn't really show us exactly what he wants to do just yet. He has the Ling Bane from Solo. No Bane Speed, so if Bjorn wants to take a fight, it's probably one of the better opportunities to before Bane Speed finishes up. But it looks like he's just going to back away a little bit. He has got the Reapers, remember, and those Reapers, those grenades, will actually add a lot into this engagement if he wants to take a fight. So that's something he might be looking towards himself here right now. He pulls everything back. He's not going to be continuing to push, not just yet at least. Starts with Combat Shields now as well. And I would begin to imagine he doesn't really want to fight before combat shields. You think about how many marines are on the map. 49. Well, 10 health per marine. That's 500 extra health. That's a lot of extra health on these marines when it comes to taking a fight. and It, it makes a pretty big difference, honestly, as we're going to be seeing these uh, marines starting to push on forwards. First couple of bands begin to connect on in. A little bit of a run by send up to the top side from the solar. We'll go to that in a few moments. As, well, is that the meters? Actually, no. It's just laying the meters on the way just about to finish building. Just the way they spread out, it looked like they might have been middles, but uh, not the case. As well, Bjorn just sitting up at high ground, just sat waiting with Widow Mines in the front, seeing if Solar's going to push on into him. I imagine Solar won't. I imagine Solar will wait for, uh, you know, for the mutas to really come into play and so on before anything else happens in this. Widow Mines just uh, popped down over here, a couple of Banes morphing in once again as but players getting close to Max now. But oh, Widow Mines shots are. Just going to start going off. Just the one in the front, actually. There's a little bit here. So here we go now. Let's see what's going to happen now as Ling Bane does push forwards. Munis are not here yet, but they will start to fly through there. They are down to the south side. And they will start to chase on these, uh, chase these medivacs back as a couple of Widow Mines burrow. And that will be enough for Bjorn to turn and fight this here. And Solo will push back or pull back against that. Does not want to continue running into this position off of creep. So Solo content with holding the fourth base. I mean, it's nice. He has held his fourth base very convincingly as well. Didn't really look too worried about it. I mean, yes, Bjorn was sat there, but he wasn't pressing forwards. And Solo with just the patience, just waiting. And he actually waited for plus two, plus two to finish. So he had the upgrade lead going into that fight, which obviously helped out a little bit as well. A bit of mute harassment towards the main. As you see the Ling run by heading towards the natural. Does Bjorn see it in time? Does he lift that deep? Oh, yes, he does. Last moment, but it happens. As we're going to see the Mutas coming on through, and it will help to kind of clean up reinforcements. And well, actually, look at this. This natural expansion is completely turret free. See a little bit of bio towards the third base, which will help out 
defend against these Zillings, but now that, uh, well, now the Depot has gone down and production has continued to be camped here. Bjorn may be in a bit of trouble, maybe he's been forced to push in some, like that, in some regards. He comes on forwards, and we're going to see Queen start to take a lot of damage here. Widow Mine going off on Queens as well. Any more Bane's connected on through, and Bjorn doesn't have much left on this side of the map. He's also dropping the third base, though, as his main base is being ransacked. He loses out on the rest of the units over here. This drop isn't going to last too much longer either. Solar going up 50, 60 supply in this game. And it looks as though Solar might be taking down Bjorn in the winner bracket round of eight. We're looking so convincing in game number one, Bjorn. He's going to drop two games, but honestly, Solar has been looking... Like he's been kind of he's turned around completely, right? What a momentum change. From Bjorn looking so great to Solo just looking absolutely and truly fantastic in both of these last two games. Cleans up a few more of these Marines from this medevac. There's one more medevac here that's being chased by Queen, runs into some Mutalisks. Will also fall as Bjorn will gather his units together. He's down on 25 SCVs. His army, as it stands, is is workable. You know, you can use it. He can maybe make something happen, but it's going to be difficult. He needs Miracle Mine Hits. And he needs really, really good connections on... Well, he just needs really good connections in terms of bailing connections, but going his way, obviously, yeah, he's saying bad bailing connections are going to be seen. It's not going to happen. Solo has way too much. He cleans on up. GG. He takes game number three, and he's going to take the 2-1 victory to advance through.